God's doing good things, isn't He? Oh, we serve such a good God. Such a good, good God. Good things are happening. won't be long. We'll have a couple of churches going. We'll have this one going. Another one up in Sarasota. As you know, like Rob said, things are moving along faster there. So it, it takes a babysitter there now. So you can imagine the couple that might be babysitting this weekend. And uh, But also, uh, Brother Moore had meetings this past week, and I heard they went really well. I'm sure he'll tell you more about them. He was in Ohio this past week, and I heard that went really good. God's just doing good thing. Ministry and the Word of God are going around the world and through this nation, and God's letting us be a part. Amen? Yeah. Letting us be a part, and it is exciting. You guys excited? Yeah. Get that way and stay that way. Amen? Yeah. How about today we build one another up? Amen. You know, some of those messages you can teach and some of those you can try to impart some wisdom into somebody. Sometimes you just need somebody to slap you on the back and say, hey, let's go. You know what? I, I don't, you guys may not. Every now and then I do. I had a coach that used to slap me like that. And, but uh, it did get me going, however. Hallelujah. And uh, so today we're going to talk about victory. Amen. I got anybody out here that's got the victory today? And we're going to edify and build up. And when we leave here, we're going to be charged up. Amen? Look at Romans 14, 19. It says, Let us therefore follow. These are the things we want to follow after. Things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. This is one of those things. Victory, talking about victory, living in victory, being around victory, that's the kind of thing that will edify you. If people are around you and they're just always winning, and they're just, some people get mad at them. We don't, do we? We're like, oh, oh, you're one of those? Come on, come on, tell me more. Because you know you're next in line or you're already getting it too, amen? Because that's the God we serve. We serve a victorious God who's given us the victory. Amen? Amen. So we're going to look at some verses that we've probably seen before. You know, you might come across them and say, Oh, i got that one highlighted, starred, colored in. The fact is, i got a little rip in my Bible right there. I've done it so many times. That don't matter. There's more there. Amen? Amen. You know, it's like I told them in the first service. they got those light switches and you push them, they come on. But if you turn the knob, they'll get brighter. God's Word's like that. Boy, in His knob, don't quit ever spinning. No, it'll just spin and spin and that, the light will get brighter and brighter and we'll get happier and happier and just walk around happy. I can't think of a better way to walk around, can you? But I was listening to somebody on TV that said, they said, what, it takes 47 muscles to frown and it takes 14 to smile? Seems to me like I, I'm all for easy, okay? <laughs> you know... If you want to, you know, I like the exercises that when you lay down, like the bench press, and, you know, I like those kind of exercises, you know. I'm all for easy. So if smiling is easier than frowning, let's go for the smile. Amen? You know, I'm going to use the less muscles because I like easy. Amen? Glory to God. Well, let's talk about born to win. Got anybody in here that's born to win? I think so. We'll look at it a little harder, and I bet you'll find you are. Amen? Go to 1 John 5 and verse 1. 1 John 5, 1. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. How many of those I got in here? Oh, yeah, whole church full. Yeah. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that, everyone that He loves... I can't read that King James. And everyone that loves Him that begat loves Him also that begotten Him. Everyone that loves Him loves the one that sent Him. How about that? Amen? Yeah, we've got to get a Dave version out there at some point. Glory to God. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen? Let's look at verse 4 and see what else that makes us. For whatsoever is born of God... Did I see some people raise their hand that said they were born of God in here? Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, 
We're world overcomers. We have now, we're not waiting on victory. We now have victory. You're not looking for victory. You, you have victory. You can wait on, you can wait on the signs of victory, but you are victorious. Amen? We're no longer those who are trying to attain victory. We have attained it through Jesus Christ our Lord. We already have it. We are it. We be it. Amen? If they say what you be, you say, I be victory. Amen? What household are you of? I'm of the household of victory. My name is Dave Victory Vaughn. And if you want to talk, you want to be around me, you're going to be around victory because I am victorious through my Lord Jesus Christ. And I have victory today. I have victory tomorrow. Guess what? Ten years ago, I'll, ten years from now, I'll have victory. I had it ten years ago too. Just didn't know it as much. Amen? Ten years from now, I'll know it even more. Amen? Because we will be the victorious ones of God. We will be who He says. It doesn't say that uh, we're going to overcome the world. It says we've overcome the world. We've already overcome. Right? That sounds good to me. Right? What did Jesus say when He was talking to His disciples? He said, "He said there's going to be tribulation. You hear people quote that all the time. There's going to be... He says in this, you know, in this world... We'll have tribulation. You know, Jesus said that, brother. In this world, you'll have tribulation. And then they quit. What did Jesus say? He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What's He saying? He's saying, it don't matter. I've already overcome. Therefore, you're an overcomer. Right? We have victory in, in every level. There's nowhere where we're missing victory. Amen? We're going to have more victory than ever because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to, to be these victorious people, then we've got to do victorious things. Amen? You know, people say, well, what's a victorious person do? Victorious people act victorious. Right? They, all, they act like people that have victory. Right? If you were a millionaire, you'd act like a millionaire. Right? Start acting. <laughs> Right? If you had the victory, you would act like one that was victorious. You would not walk around in the mully grubs. You wouldn't walk around, oh, I just don't know what this day holds for me, brother. You know, the Word says you just don't know what's in store. The Word says, tells you everything that's in store for you. It says that no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. You, you reckon that's bad stuff? No! He wouldn't want you to see that. It's good stuff. The Word will tell you what it's got for you. It's good. He ain't trying to hide it either. He'll tell you, I want people to know you're good. He said all the peoples of the earth will see that you're blessed and they'll be afraid of you. Why? Because you're so blessed they don't know what to do with you. I remember when I first started teaching Bible study in denomination church. Anyway, I started teaching Bible studies and Started teaching some of this, some of this. I mean, I was pretty rough. You know, I thought if they didn't get it, you turned them upside down and shook them until they did. That was wrong. I realize that now. Now I just do other things too. No. But I came, I went to my mom one night and I said, Mom, they don't like me. <laughs> I said, they don't like what I'm saying. They don't like me. They don't like this word. I, I don't think I want to keep doing it. And she said, it's not that they don't like you. It's just that they don't know what to do with you. Why? Because the Word is what says it. I wasn't telling them what Dave believed. I was telling them what God said. That God said they were victorious. God said they were healed by the stripes of Jesus. God said that they could be prosperous and have all good things in this earth. God said these things. It wasn't the Word of Dave. This has never been the Word of Dave and never will be the Word of Dave. But it's my Word now. Amen? Because I'm keeping it in my heart. Amen? And I want to know how good He is. Amen? And I want to act victorious. I want to walk victorious. I want to do what victorious people do. What's the first thing victorious people do? They train like winners. Look at 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9, around verse 24. Now, when I played football, I did not like practice. Even a little bit. Loved the game. Loved the game, man. Had more fun playing the game. Man, I get out there. But I hated practice. 
And my coach always said, he said, it doesn't matter how much you love the game, you will practice the same way you play. If you don't train like a winner, you will not play like a winner. Right? If you don't train to win, if you just train to be in the game, then you'll be in the game. If you train to win the game, you'll win the game. We as Christians should train as winners. In other words, as people that are already victorious. We shouldn't be training just to be victorious. We should be training because we are victorious. We should be training, we should be running this race every morning. You know, people get away, they say, well, you know, I don't know if that confession thing works. You know what? Get up every morning and confess. Amen? That's training. Well, but I'm not sick. Claim your health every day. Why? That's training. You know, I used to, we, we had to run a mile every year before football season. The first thing you did before the practice started, you ran a mile, and you were supposed to run a certain time. That never happened for me. I did run a certain time, but it wasn't anywhere near the one they wanted. <laughs> but, but all summer long, I would goof off. I did not train. I didn't run. I didn't do any. I, I, I was a teenager. I ate potato chips, and I watched TV. And worked, you know, whatever, you know, had to make some money, so I worked. But I did not train. And about two weeks before football season started, by golly, I thought, oh no, I better get out there and train. Too late. Say it after me. Too late. You don't go in two weeks from at, to, from football season starting and hope you're going to run the time they want you to run. Ain't going to happen. And not only did I not run the time I couldn't run, I wasn't trained, so I did stupid things like I tried to run it the way I could, and about two laps, I'm passed out. So not only did I not run it, I didn't make it. And they said, when I crossed the finish line, I said, 11 minutes and 24 seconds. Wow, that's three days, isn't it? (laughs) Why? Because I quit. (laughs) Why? Because I didn't train. I wasn't, I didn't want to win. I didn't like the mile. I didn't like anything about it. And I didn't train to win. I didn't train to succeed. We have already got success. We need to train to have that. We need to train like we are winners. We need to train. We need to train for first place. We don't want to train for second place. People who are satisfied with second place, they're not looking at what God says. He says victory. Victory is not second place. Right? What do they say on those t-shirts? Second place is first loser? It is. It's not victory. You don't win. You know, you can ask people, who won the Super Bowl ten years ago? They might be able to tell you who won the Super Bowl. They wouldn't be able to tell you who lost. Unless it was their team. (laughs) Right? Because it's the one that gets the victory. It's the one that trained and, 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 and overcame and got what was theirs. That's the one that has what God has for them. Amen? And we can have this victory. And we want to train like it. Amen? We want to train like it. It says, it says in verse 24, Do you not know that in a race all runners run? See, I was running. I was running that mile. <laughs> but I wasn't in running. I wasn't doing this second part. It says, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way to get the prize. I was not running in such a way. I was running in such a way to endure. I was running in such a way to get by. we got too many Christians running that way. They're getting just enough word that they might know something about it, that they, they might get through, they could get through. There's too many people running to get by just to get to the finish line. We don't want to get to the finish line. We want to get through the finish line in first place. Amen? I don't want to just finish my course. I want to finish my course in victory. I want to finish it the way Paul finished his course. What did Paul say? He said, I fought the good fight. I finished my course. He did it all. And he's victorious. And now he says, now I'm going on to greater victory. Amen? Because he got all the victory he wanted here, and he got more when he got there. Amen? I'm not... You aren't. I'm not. We are not going to settle for second best. We don't serve a second best God. We serve the God. The good God. The kind God. The gracious God. The prosperous God. The God that has a good plan. This is our God. The God that has given us victory. And we should train in such a way to be the victorious ones. Amen? We're not training just to get through. We're training to win. Amen? It says, it says, run in such a way to get the prize. 
It says everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. <laughs> Dave does not like strict training. Dave likes Little Debbie's and chocolate milk. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Guess what? People who are training to get the prize, they probably like Little Debbie's and chocolate milk too, but you know what they don't do? They don't eat Little Debbie's and chocolate milk. Why? Because they're training to get the prize. As Christians, we want to stay away from those things that would hinder us, that would keep us from believing the right things, that would keep us from seeing a God vision, that would keep us back from His best. Amen? We want to train as though we're going to win. We want to look at the Word of God and when we see it, we want to see His goodness. We want to see health and healing. We want to see salvation and wholeness. We want to see the goodness of God in us. Amen? And we don't, we don't want to look for our, an excuse to fail. you got too many people looking. They, they fail and then they go to the Word of God and they say, oh, right there's why I can fail. And they, they've read Job three times now. There's no excuse to fail. You got the victory. Right? And God ain't never failed no one. The song we just sang? Right? Are they singing the offering? God has never failed me. He ain't never failed you. He ain't never failed me. He ain't never failed nobody. And He ain't never gonna. Amen? We get that started in our head. You're already on the right track. Amen? Because you're already training yourself to only believe what's right. If you only believe what's right, you now are on the track to training to win. Amen? People that that choose to believe other things about God, bad things, if they choose to believe their own doctrine or this other doctrine that's come out, or, you know, God may do this, God may do that. God may not. God has already done everything He's going to do. It's not a question of may heal you. He already healed you. Amen. It's not a question of may prosper you. He has already prospered you. He has already made us victorious. We're not looking for it. We have it. Amen. Everyone that competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. We do it to get a crown that lasts forever. If you'll, if you'll keep your eyes on the prize, on the true prize, then you'll, you'll train to win. Because the, the prize has value to you. When the prize has value, you don't quit. Amen? When it's something you want. I mean, how do you train a little kid? You tell them, you tell them man, if you'll do this, well, I'll give you this. And you show them a lollipop that they, that's this big around and got the swirls in it. Man, the next thing you know, they're cleaning their room, vacuuming. They'll do whatever you want. Because the prize is huge. Amen? If we would truly see the prize before us, if we'd truly see the victory that's won, the health, the healing, the the ability to have God work through us into others' lives, then the prize would be too great to accept anything less than victory. Amen? Because he he, He desires for us to walk in this victory for others. Amen? It's not just about you. He loves that you're going to have victory, but it's not just your victory. It's everyone's victory. They, they're going to see victory on you, in you, and through you. Amen. Amen? And you will be a testimony of victory everywhere you go because you began training like a winner. Amen? Right? You guys with me? Verse 26, Therefore I do not run like a man running aimlessly. In other words, i got a goal. When we wake up in the morning, we're already victorious. Everywhere we go, we have a goal. Amen? You're victorious. You're getting ready to go in an unvictorious world. Is that a word? It is today. Unvictorious. Right? And you are victorious. Everywhere you go, expect to change somebody else's life. When you walk into work, you're not just there as an employee. You're there as as, as a as a Christian, as a victorious Christian, as a man or woman of God, for all the world to see. Right? And they're going to see you no matter how you act, so you might as well act victorious. Amen? Amen? Because they're, they're, going to, they're going to say, well, yeah, if he's a Christian, I don't want to be one of those. <laughs> or he's going to say, what is it about them? When everything's down, they're up. When everything's going wrong, they're up. When everything seems to be at its worst, they're, they, they believe the best. What is it about them? And not only do they believe it, they're having it. 
Glory to God. That's called victory. That's called victory. Amen? And, and, and when, when you figure that out, you'll train to win. What my coach figured out is that we had a whole bunch of people that weren't training in the summertime. And so it took the whole season. By the end of the season, we were trained. Well, it was too late then. We'd already lost seven games. So he said, next year, we're having summer training camp. Why? Because you're going to train like a winner. You're going to train like a winner. And you're going to be a winner. And we had summer training camp, and we, had, and we were a winner. Absolutely. We were a winner. Glory to God. And that's, but that's what, that's what God said. He's saying, train as a winner. Run as, as though you are the person that's going to win. People that are going to win do not quit. They don't quit on their training. They don't quit in the meet. They don't quit in the mile. You know, I, run, I was running the other day. You know, over here, and there's this hill, and it may not be much of a hill to somebody else, but man, it looks like, it looks like a mountain when I get to it because I, I'm already huffing and puffing. And I, get, I come to this thing, and I'm like, I wonder if I should walk today. Probably be just as good exercise to walk. That's what Christians do. They're like, I've, I've done enough. You know what? I've done enough. I, I can just walk up this mountain now. No, no, no. You climb that mountain with all the speed you got left in you. Run it like when you get to the other side, you're the one that won. When you get on top, dance around like Rocky did at the top of them stairs. <laughs> Amen? Because you're the victor. Have a victor's heart. Have a victor's will. Have a victor's demeanor. Everything about you should reek of victory. Amen? Look at 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 57. But thanks be to God... Which giveth, giveth us, giveth, the, giveth her, giveth, gave us, has already given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not saying, he's not saying thanks be to him who might give you the victory. He's not saying be thankful because you could win. No, he's saying you have the victory. He's saying, hey, how long do you want to play the game? Right? Because, you know, people say, well, it's three strikes, nine innings, you're done. No! Ten innings, eleven innings, eighteen innings, twenty-seven innings, eighty-five strikes. When I win, we're done. Right? My bat, my ball will go home when I'm ready to go. Right? We win. We have the victory. He's already given us the victory. We're not, go- we're not trying to attain it. He achieved it. We receive it. Amen? Glory to God. He's not, he's not saying get victory. He's saying be victorious. He's saying walk in the victory I've already gotten for you. Glory to God. That's the God we serve. He says, it says thanks be unto God which, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. People who have victory, you can't change their mind. You ain't moving them. They ain't leaving and they ain't quitting. You can tell them, you can give them 17 bad reports, 32 new bills, and, and tell them their kids and their wife ain't no good and they're going to wait till they are. The bills will be paid, the, right? The bad reports are going to turn to good. It doesn't matter because we serve the good God. When that report turns around, it'll be the right one. Amen? Amen? When, when those bills are paid, they'll, they'll be yours. <laughs> You'll have your money, whatever. Right? We're steadfast. We're not moved by circumstances and situations. We're not like, oh, brother, you just don't know. You just don't know, brother. Bad things have been happening to me, and I don't know if God's going to work for me or not. Stop that! Be steadfast. Be victorious. Stop whining. Stop crying. If that's what you're doing, it's not victorious. Whining and crying have nothing to do with victory unless you're crying because you're so happy you just won. (laughs) Whining and crying are not victorious. Believe me, I've done it. And I did not receive victory from it. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, help me. I've made such a mess of things. I don't even know if I'm worthy for your help. And you know what? I didn't get no help. Why? Because that's not victorious. 
That's not being who He made me to be. It's not having what He bought and paid for me to have. Amen? I'm going to be victorious. I'm going to walk in this victory. Amen? And I'm going to be steadfast and immovable, knowing that He always gives me the victory. And knowing the next part of the verse, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much you know that your labor for the Lord is not in vain. What's he saying? Have the victory all the time because be steadfast, be immovable because that victory, that, that labor that you're doing, it's not in vain. Others will see it. Others will see God. They will know that the things you're doing are right. Because why? Because you're blessed. It's not just because you did it. You know, everybody, Just because somebody runs a mile and tells me they did does not make me want to run it. Does it make I want to know what it's going to do. I mean, is it good? Does it help me? What, what, what is there about it that's going to cause... It's like robbing the pen. Is, is it a great pen? Right? As Christians, our labor is not in vain. We've got to be victorious everywhere we go. We've got to walk in this victory. We've got to be steadfast and unmovable. When things don't go the way we think they should, we still believe they will. Right? When things don't look the way they should, we believe it's about to change. Right? We got the victory. We're not trying to gain victory by saying it. I'm not confessing it so I'll get victory. I'm confessing it because I have victory. Amen? And because I have the victory, I'm immovable. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Look at 2 Corinthians 2. Ooh, baby. Lord's helping us. Is this okay today? If it doesn't help you, it helps me, so be happy for your brother. Amen? 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God who might cause us... Oh no, it doesn't say might? Oh, I better read it. I wrote that. I better read it. Oh, who always... Thanks be unto God who always... You reckon God meant always? I mean, because, you know, I know Grandma, Grandma, she she went to church all her life, prayed in tongues. She she laid hands on the sick and they got well, witnessed to people, and, and she prayed, and God didn't heal her. Wow. I hit somebody's funny bone, didn't I? There's too many people deciding whether they got the victory because of that. You don't know what happened with Grandma. This is the Word of God. I know what happened with it. It's infallible. And if He says He always causes you to triumph, well, maybe that was (laughs) one of Kim's favorite songs, Mercy in Disguise. God ain't disguised in mercy. No, 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 no. He's going to put it all up there for you to see what mercy truly is. It's you not getting what you deserved. And then He's going to give you some grace. You're going to get what you didn't deserve. He ain't going to disguise it. It ain't mercy in disguise. No, He always causes us to triumph. That's what our God, that's what He's got on His mind. That's what Jesus had on His mind. What I'm going to do is always going to cause them to triumph. Amen? He's going to always cause us to triumph. Why? Because here, He's going to tell you why. And make manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place. Look at that in the NIV, the end of that verse. For we are, well, there we go. <laughs> But thanks be unto God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of Him. We smell like victory. We should smell like victory. When we're coming, people go, what does that smell? What is that? And you say, that's victory. Got it all over me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's victory. That's, that's the goodness of God. You smell some goodness over here. You're smelling a little love over here. Got some faith and peace down here. I, 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 put, a little, I, I put a little peace behind my ear. Huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, I like to have a little peace. I am the fragrance of God's goodness here on the earth. I'm the fragrance of His kindness. I'm the fragrance of His love. I'm the fragrance of victory. When people get around me, they smell victory because that's how I smell. Amen? That's how we smell. Because we have victory. We're the fragrance. That's why He gives us the victory. So, because we're the fragrance of that victory here on the earth. When people get around us, they're like, and they say, man, it's not looking good. And then you look and you say, I smell victory. And they say, economy's looking pretty rough out there. I smell victory. You know, you and your wife ain't been getting along too well. I smell victory. Why? Because we are victorious. Every time, every way, it don't, the circumstance don't change the way I smell. Amen? I smell victorious because I'm a victorious person. If you were fried chicken, you'd smell like fried chicken. Amen? You are victorious, therefore smell victorious. Amen? When we come around, people ought to say, Woo, they smell good. I like them. We smell victorious. He spreads. He spreads. He's using us to spread the smell, the fragrance of who He truly is to the earth. The knowledge of Him. The knowledge of he's, that He's a good God. That He's a kind God. The knowledge that He has good things for you. That He's a prosperous God. That's what We're the fragrance of that. If we don't be that fragrance, that smell will not be in the earth. Right? Because we are that smell. We are through where that fragrance comes. Amen? I want to be that fragrance, right? They say, what fragrance are you wearing today? Victory? What fragrance you got on? I got victory in Jesus fragrance. What fragrance are you going to wear tomorrow? I'm going to wear some fragrance of victory aftershave. Why? Because I'm going to smell like victory. And when people see me coming, they're going to see victory coming. They're going to smell it from a mile away. And they'll say, he smells good. Amen? They're going to smell victory. They ain't going to smell defeat. Amen? We ain't going to be those that walk around smelling defeat. Right? What's the, what, what happened to the three Hebrew children? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Huh? I think they smelled like victory. Let's just look. Daniel 3.27. Daniel 3.27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men. Put it in the NIV. Crowded around them. They saw that the fire, they were in a furnace that killed the people that threw them in there. That's how hot this fire was. It killed the guards that threw them in the fire. Amen? They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was the hair of their head singed, their robes were not scorched, and, what's that? No smell of fire on them. They were just in the furnace, no defeat. They, they came out, you know how they smelled? Victory! They said, hey, the, your clothes aren't even burned. You don't even smell like smoke! Why? Because they smell like victory. You can't smell like victory and defeat. You're either going to smell like defeat or victory. And God don't give half victories. He didn't pull them out of there and say, well, they, I got them out, but their clothes got a little burned. God's not into partial victories. No. He don't, he's not ever going to be okay with just enough. He wants whole victories. He brought them out. The only thing these people lost while they were in there were the ropes that kept their hands tied. The stuff the world tried to put on them. Amen? That's it. Why? Because God, Jesus wasn't into partial victories. Remember the blind guy came to Him and He said, he said pray for Him, prayed for Him, and He said, how do you see? He said, I see men as trees. He said, nope. He pulled him over to the side, got him away from the rest of those people, laid hands on him again and said, how about now? And he saw. Why? No partial victory. No partial victory. Full sight. When I lay hands on the blind, they're going to see. They're not going to see men as trees. God's not going to say, I can only get them to where they needed glasses. (laughs) 
No! He's God! He can give you whole new eyes if He wants. Better yet, if you want. Hallelujah! There's no defeat. There's no little hints of defeat. He's not going to, he's not going to leave you a little hint of defeat to learn by. You know, this is just so they can remember that I'm God. I'm going to leave a little defeat there so they can see that without me, they're nothing. He's a good and kind God. He ain't going to remind you you ain't nothing. He don't need to. All you got to do is take his hand off you and you'll find out you ain't nothing without him. Amen? He's not going to leave a little something. I used to get my ankles taped before I played games. And I had one coach, they put a pre-wrap on there because I didn't like shaving my ankles. And so they put a pre-wrap on there. And I had one coach, and he would tape all the pre-wrap, and then he'd put one wrap around the hair on my leg. And he said, you know what that's for? And I said, what? And he said, to remind you to shave your leg next time. <laughs> it reminded me too. God ain't doing that. He's not leaving you a little hint of defeat so you can see your victory. He's just going to make your victory so big that you can't miss it. Amen? He's going to bring you out and you ain't going to smell like smoke. You ain't going to have no singeing on your clothes. He's the God that takes you through the fire and you'll not be burned. He's the God that takes you through the flood and you'll not be overtaken. He's a big, huge, awesome God and He's more than enough to overcome what you're going through because He's already overcome it for you. Amen? And now you're an overcomer. Right? Got any overcomers in here? Yeah. Are you getting more overcoming? Yeah. yeah, me too. Amen. Amen. You know what else victorious people do? Yeah, overcoming. It's a new word. We'll come up with more before the day's over. You know what else victorious people do? They talk victory. They shout victory. Amen. They don't talk, oh, brother, I just don't know. You know, things just aren't looking good for me. My wife called me names this morning. I, don't, I just can't do this. No! They don't do that. If their wives do call them names, say, you know what, she was probably having a bad day because she's got the victory. She's with me. And I got the victory, so she got to have the victory. So if something's messed up here, it's going to have to come around. Amen? We don't talk negative. We shout. Victorious people, if you ever notice, victorious people, they're shouters. Amen? They're saying, whoa! Oh! Oh! You can't believe what happened to me today. And they're not talking quiet. My daughter don't ever talk quiet. You know why? Because she's always happy about something. Why? Because she's victorious. Why? Because Dad's given her everything. <laughs> Guess what? Dad's given you everything. We're victorious. We should be shouting before we see the victory. When did they shout at the wall at Jericho? While it was falling or before it fell? Before it fell. They shouted and it fell. When, they, when Gideon went out and they broke their jars and the, and the fire was in the jars. And then what happened? They shouted. That's right. They shouted. Why? Because shouting is victory. It's, it's what, when you're excited, you shout. Sometimes you just need to shout. Sometimes you need to stop and say, Hey! Hey, devil! I'm at the victory! I don't lose, I win! you got to shout! Amen? And you don't want to shout like this, Oh, God, help me! That is not victorious. That is unvictorious. Right? We got too many people shouting like that. Right? We want to shout, Thank you, Lord! So just that, I think Paul was probably shouting when he wrote that. He said, But thanks be unto God, who always gives me the victory. Glory to God. Why? Because he was excited. Because he knew who he was. He knew what God had done for him. He was unwilling to lose. No second place for him. No second place for him. And he was shouting. He was shouting. And then when we're talking, we're not talking the, the problem. We're talking the answer. Why? Because that's all we have is answers. Oh, but you don't know, brother. I've been living with this for nigh on 85 years now. I don't think God's... Stop it! Talk victory. Don't talk defeat. we got too many people. They're willing to talk defeat. Right? I remember when we were, uh, 
when I was in the business world before I came and worked for the church. And the business that I was doing, I had miserably failed at it because I didn't let God help me. I thought I did, but I didn't. We won't go into that whole story. But uh, we started getting a hold of the Word. And one of the stories that we had really gotten a hold of was the one in First Kings that Brother Moore talked about. It was either last week or the week before, probably the week before, where Elijah heard the sound of abundant rain. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. And man, we'd get a bill in, and my, and my brother would look at me and he said, I don't see that money in the bank. And I'd look at him and we'd both smile and I'd say, I hear the sound of abundant rain. I hear the sound of abundant rain. I, I don't hear I don't hear the bill collectors calling. I hear money coming in. I hear provision heading my way. I hear the sound of abundant rain. You know when when Elijah said that? Not when the sprinkle started. Not even when the cloud was in the sky. Before he told the guy, he said, "You better get ready, because I hear the sound of abundant rain." How did he hear it? He was in victory. He already knew it was going to rain because he was going to ask. Amen? We can see it in James. He asked and it rained. Why? Because he knew who he was. He knew the victory he had. And he knew what he was saying. And he said, I hear the sound of abundant rain. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're believing for. But I hear the sound of abundant rain. And the Brother Moore didn't teach that just to be teaching it. It was the Word of the Lord. Amen? And I hear the sound of abundant rain. Glory to God. God's doing some good things. Amen? Set it before the clouds, not after the clouds, not waiting on something, believing something. other thing is, we talk that way because we're excited. We're excited about God. Look at Psalm, look at Psalm 40, uh, verse 9. I'm going to read it in the easy-to-read version. I like easy-to-read. Amen? I told the good news of victory to the people in the great assembly. And Lord, You know that I will never stop telling that good news. That's the way victorious people are. They say, you know what? I'm telling it and I'm going to tell it more. And tomorrow I'm going to tell it again and it's going to get gooder. I'm going to have the gooder news. And then I'm going to have the gooder us news. And then I'm going to have the gooder us -er news. And it's going to get gooder. And I'm not going to shut my mouth. Because it's too good to keep me quiet. I am victorious. Victorious people, you can't keep them quiet. Why? Because they are always got something in here that's going to fight, that's going to win. When somebody says it's black and you know it's white, it's going to be white. If they say it's bad, it's going to be good. If they say it's getting worse, you say, no, it's getting better. Expect something more. Expect something more. Expect victory. Glory to God. Glory to God. And shout it. Shout it. Say, I'm, I told the good news. I shout the good news. I'm going to tell... Uh, we have a movie. <laughs> I do this to Kim all the time. There's a movie we watch. And the guy runs in and he says, I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows about it. That's the way we need to be with God. We need to say, I'm in love. I love Him and He loves me and I'm victorious and I don't care who knows about it. Glory to God. That's our God. That's our God. And doing these things gives you the heart of a champion. The heart of a champion is a steadfast, immovable champion. It's a steadfast, immovable heart. It's a confident heart. Glory to God. I text my wife that all the time, by the way. Glory to God. Glory to God. Psalm 27, verse 1. Thank you, Lord. He's helping us today. He's building us up. These aren't things we don't know. These are things we want to know more. These are things that we want to get that we want to hit where they already were and grow in us. And we want them to explode and overflow and ooze out of us. Why? Because they smell good. They smell good and man, they look good. And man, will you quit talking bad when you have that. You'll start talking the answer. You'll start talking victory. You'll, you won't even know the word defeat. The only, word defeat. the only reason you'll say defeat is so you can describe the state of the devil. Because that's his state. He is defeated. Why? Because we have victory. That's why he's defeated. 
Don't call Him defeated unless you have victory. He's defeated because Jesus won us victory. Amen. Has no place in your life. No, no, he, he, don't, he ain't even supposed to be there. He ain't even supposed to be there. No. Psalm 27. Heart of a champion. Verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Man, you get, that's, just, that's just cocky right there. The Lord's my light and salvation. Who am I going to be afraid of? Somebody comes up to you and says, this is going wrong, this is going bad, and this is going to happen. You say, uh-uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I ain't a scared. A scared. That's a little kid word for when you're afraid, right? Didn't you ever say that, Mommy? I'm a scared. That's what we say here in hillbilly land, okay? <laughs> a scared. <laughs> All right, I ain't afraid. How about that? (laughs) The Lord is the strength of my life. And of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they're going to stumble and fall. That's the heart of a champion. He's not going to lose. He don't care what you bring at him. Give me your best shot. You lose. Guess what? At the end of all this... I'm going to be standing. You're not. It's as simple as that for somebody that's got victory. They're not just talking. They're believing. They believe in what Jesus has done for them. They are in faith. Amen? They will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart... Why? Why? My heart's the heart of a champion. My heart's victorious. My heart has already won. My heart won't fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Glory to God. That's the heart of a champion, isn't it? That's somebody who's, that's not somebody who's winning. That's somebody who's won. Right? They're just waiting on, they're just waiting on the results to come in because they already know they won. Like when they, when they, when they say, you won, they're not even going to be surprised. They'll already have their hand in the air waiting for you to grab it. Why? Because they won before they spoke. Because they have the heart of a champion. They believe God. Amen? Go on in in, uh, chapter 27 down to verse 13. I am still. He started out confident. And now at the end of this chapter, I'm still confident of this. I will. I will. I will. I will. He didn't say, I think I'm going to. I hope it's possible. Lord, if you could just see your way clear this one time, if I could just see your goodness in the land of the... No, no, and no. A victorious person, they say, I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm not waiting until I get in the sweet by and by to get my little cabin on the brook. No, I'm going to have a mansion there and I'm going to have a mansion here and I'm going to have healing and I'm going to have restoration and my life will have value and I will see the goodness of God in this land here now today. Amen? If you ain't been seeing it, start saying it. I I haven't really been seeing the goodness of God. Well, maybe because you keep saying, I really ain't been seeing the goodness of God. (laughs) Right? Victorious people don't just say it, they shout it. Amen? Shout it with me. I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Glory! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm getting excited. I'm about to get excited. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Your heart is a heart of a champion, is a heart that won't quit, a heart that never quits, a heart that refuses to lose. You're a refuse to lose person. Amen? When they say you're about to go down, you know you're about to get up. Amen? We're not losing. We're not losing. Right? You a loser? You're a winner. Not only that, you're a winner. <laughs> you already won. Winners are on their way to winning. Winners are already won. Glory to God. 
Thank you, Lord. Did I say Hebrews 12? <laughs> oh, God's good. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, we saw the three Hebrew children, we saw the Joshua at Jericho, we saw these people are our clouds of witnesses. David, he, he wasn't a loser, he was a winner. We saw all these people, and then we see Jesus victorious picture of victory amen since we're surrounded by such a great great cloud of witnesses let us therefore throw off let us throw off everything that hinders us victorious people don't have plan b well i could stay with my wife or no no or stay with your wife. <laughs> Boy, come on, love me. Love me. <laughs> they don't have a plan B. Right? If the car you had was broke and you couldn't get a new one, you'd fix the one you had. Right? Too many people willing to come up with their own idea. Well, if I just had enough money. No, if you just had enough money, you'd still mess it up. I did it. It ain't the money. Right? It ain't their fix. It ain't the world's way. And that's why they say, oh, we got a perfect way for you to get out of your bills. Come see us. We'll give you a little loan. Starts off at 10%, goes up to... And yeah. Why? Because they don't want you to know what it goes up to. But boy, you'll be in good shape when this all comes about, right? Sure you will. Plan B. Plan A is I'm already victorious. I'm already prosperous. I already have the peace that passes understanding. I already have prosperity. I already have victory in Jesus. I don't need a plan B. I don't need to decide how my kids are going to be. They're going to be serving God and saved. Amen? That's what my mom said about me. And it took a long time to see that victory, but she never gave up on it. And I guarantee you, you couldn't see victory. Every day, people said, how's Dave doing? He's saved and serving God. Dave had just gotten out of the bar and was in bed because he had a hangover. Dave had been so busy being stupid that he forgot what God was even doing for him. How's Dave doing? He's saved and serving God. Next week, how's, how's that Dave doing? He's saved and serving the Lord. That's my mom's commitment. She never backed off. She'd see me and she'd go, you know how you're doing? I said, how, Mom? Saved and serving the Lord. If you were part of our house, saved and serving the Lord was your next step. You could fight and, and kick against the goads all you wanted, but saved and serving the Lord was the next step for you. Now, when you're ready to be who you are, come right back and see me. Because that's who you are. Saved and serving the Lord. Dave, saved and serving the Lord. Vaughn. Amen? You're going to get what you say anyway. <laughs> you are. We might as well say some good stuff then, huh? People say, well, I've said stuff that I ain't got. Well, everybody watch it. <laughs> it's the mercy of God you ain't got it. Or, wait, you are. Amen? Amen. Throw off everything that hinders us. Let's not let people give us a different idea. Let's not let give people give us a different plan. We know the plan. Here's the plan. My plan is to prosper you and not to harm you. My plan is to give you hope and a future. My plan is that you'll call upon me and I'll answer you. That's my plan, that I'll be your God and you'll be my people. That's my plan. we got a plan. We don't need a new one. And when it don't look like His plan's coming to pass, say, I stop right here. I'm getting back in the plan. Amen. Why? Because the plan is victory. The plan is victory. Glory to God. 
Therefore, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with patience, with perseverance, the race that's marked out for us. Run with cheerful, hopeful endurance. Don't run the way I run the mile. And I was like, is this ever going to get over with? And that, you know, that's how people are running their race right now. They're like, serving God. It's like the guy that had to make the donuts. Got to make the donuts. You guys, don't, you guys don't remember that commercial? <laughs> oh, ee, oh, 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 ee, oh. <laughs> no! That's the Wizard of Oz! It ain't happening that way for us. We're going to run our race with patience, cheerful, hopeful endurance. Why are we going to endure? Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen for us. The good is coming to us. The good thing is happening for us. Healing is ours. Prosperity is ours. Peace, joy, love, happiness. All the good things that God ever is and was and is now. Did I say it too many times? Ever is and was and is now. We have. We're not trying to get them. They're ours. Dig a little deeper in the box. You missed part of the present. You pulled your trip to heaven out and forgot all your other stuff. Huh? Did you ever when you were a little kid, man, you got that big box and the the thing on top was the neatest thing ever, so you never dug any deeper. But did you realize that they got you the BB gun and the BBs? Wow! Dig a little deeper. The gift of God is whole. The victory of God is certain. And it's ours. The whole thing. Glory to God. Glory to God. We'll run our race with patience. And when it don't look like we're getting it, we'll sit there and say, oh yeah, we are. And they'll say, when? And say, don't need to know. I just know I'm getting it. But when? (laughs) It's coming. I already have it. It's just a matter of me, me walking in it now. I don't, I'm not, you're patient. You're hopefully, cheerfully enduring. Why? You can only hopefully, cheerfully endure if you truly believe you have it. If it's something that somebody's promised you that you know you're going to have. You'll wait at the checkout window all day if somebody told you you're getting ready to have a $100 bill. And they say, you got your $100 bill yet? No, but I'm still sitting here waiting. What about now? Still waiting. They said I'd have a hundred dollar bill. I'm going to wait until I got my hundred dollar bill. Amen. Amen. We got victory. Every situation. Never quit till you have it. Why? Because it's already yours. It is certain. There will never be something that you go through that victory is not the end result for you if you do not quit. Amen? That's why He says, let's keep our eyes on that cloud of witnesses. Let's, let's throw off the things that hinder us and the sin that entangles us. And let's run our race that's marked out for us. There's a race marked out for you and me. God's already got a, a, a course for you and me. And normally I'd say, I don't want to run, God, but I know this course is good. And I, if I'll run it, everything on it will be for me and about me and through me to others. I want to run that course. I want to run that course. And I want to finish that race with patient endurance. Amen? Amen. So how am I going to do it? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. That's how you do it. That's how you get victory over everything. There is nothing in this world that you cannot gain victory on fixing your eyes on Jesus. You know what you can do when you fix your eyes on Jesus? You can walk on water. Peter fixed his eyes on Jesus, stepped out, and he just, he just superseded the law of gravity. Why? Because he fixed his eyes on Jesus. Victory was sure. Jesus told him to step out. Victory was sure. Glory to God. You reckon he shouted about that? Well, how'd it go today, Peter? Well... Not really much to sit on the water. No. He, he walked on water. He may have messed up the next two steps. Why? Because he got on some stuff that hindered him. But while his eyes were fixed on Jesus, while his eyes were fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, 
The one that said, not only am I going to start you, I'm going to finish you. I'm going to get you from the beginning to the end, and I see the end from the beginning, and it's all good for you, all downhill. When you get on your bike, you don't even have to pedal, just coast. What's better than that? I don't like pedaling. I like the coast part. If you like pedaling, I'm sorry, go ahead and pedal. It's good for you. Fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, 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 Jesus saw me and He saw you. And He got happy about what He was getting ready to do. Oh, no, He wasn't, he wasn't like, the, like the TV shows. No, inside of Him was a heart of joy. He knew every step He took was one step closer for you and me to get to God. Every step He took to the cross, to the grave, to raise again. Every step He took, we were like this. And as He took a step, and here's God, every step He took, we are like this. And every step He took. And when God raised Him from the dead, we were like this. Glory to God. We were now where we could go to the Father. We could go boldly before the throne of grace. Glory to God. That's our God. Victory was coming on the cross. Victory was coming in the grave. Victory was coming when He was raised from the dead, when the love of God swept through hell and brought Him out. Firstborn from the dead. I'm next, you're next, you're next, they're next, they're next, they're next, they're next. Victory. 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 That's our God. And when we fix our eyes on Jesus, when we look at Him and we consider Him, we fix our eyes and we consider Him. We fix our eyes and we consider Him. People say, so you got victory today? Let me look. I look at Jesus. Yep. Consider Him. Yep. Jesus. Consider Jesus. Yep. I got victory. Why? Because you're only looking at two things. Jesus and Jesus. Maybe that's one. Glory to God. For the joy set before Him. He endured opposition because He was getting victory. Glory to God. And you are the fruit of His victory. And He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And He has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Thank Him. You got the victory? Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Where's our focus? Jesus. Victory. 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 Victory.